Welcome to the video. Let's try to find the volume of the frustum, 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 of a pyramid with a square base of size 23, square top side 9, and height 20. So I did not know this word before. I googled, and this is what I found. How it looks like. Basically, it's the base of the pyramid. There's the top of the pyramid. We're using the base in this case. So let's just copy it to the bottom picture over here. But in general, I tried to draw it myself, and I realized it's just one parallelogram in this case it's squared and another parallelogram and then you do what connect the dots and check out magically it shows up pretty cool so what we're going to do we're going to use the base and put the base physically on the x-axis like so the height we're going to put the height on the y-axis it's going to cut through and go like the like so y-axis so it kind of reminds you the object that was created from rotation, but in this case it wasn't rotated. It's still symmetrical. And that's why it still makes sense to use X and Y cases, X and Y axis, without using third dimension Z, which we're gonna teach you how to use in Calculus 3 class, which is X, Y, and Z. Now, let's see what we have here. So we are given that all of these are squares. The bottom square is the, is the longest one. So it has each side is 23, right? 23, and this one is 23. Then the top square has side nines. So this one is nine, and this one is nine. Nice. Now what we have here, we also have height. H is already written there. The height of this object is 20 equals to 20. Nice. So as always with slicing, uh, usually we slice with discs or washers. In this case, we're also gonna slice and see what the sample slice is. That's kind of what a scientist will do. We'll make a slice and see how it looks like. When I'm making a slice, it is a square. Here it is, this is the most general slice. And it is a square. What kind of square it is? So, for the general slice, we're going to say that we don't know the lengths of this square. So let's make it x. x is the length of the square. Then x will depend on y, the width. The x will de x will tell us what the width is because they are the same. X and y are the same. So let's find half of each side, and let's call it x. So we're going to say that each, each, so solution, each slice is a square. That's very important. What is a sample slice? A square. This is sample slice is a square of of side 2x so we have a square and we take half of each side and call it x so the total will be x plus x each side is basically x plus x which is 2x like so 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared as area of this uh, square right that's kind of my point here so half is x then we know the formula then we know the formula for the area of the slice it's not pi r squared it's not circumference times height it's actually and it's not pi r squared minus pi r squared it's a square so don't overthink this this is still the object you know it's a square area of the square is height times width or rectangle right but since it's a square it's actually side squared so it's 2x times 2x, I'm kind of overthinking this for you, just in case you was wondering, which is 4x squared. a times a, or height times width, where the height is the same and width is the same, and each is 2x. Well, the thing is, we are rotating, if you imagine this is a rotation, about y-axis, so we need to use dy case here, because we're kind of pretending it's a disk method, because we're slicing vertically, uh, we're slicing horizontally. Let me explain it a little bit uh, more. 
how to determine the case when you have 2D object and then you're rotating about, about Y axis. The case will be determined by the slice if the slice width. So let's see. If this, that's a 3D object. I just trying to show you this like so. If the slice of this cone, width of the slice can be described on the Y axis, then it's called delta Y change in Y. Here it is. How wide this slice is. The slice is Y wide. That takes you to the DY case. If we had uh, like those cool objects we had in the previous examples like these, what is slice of these? When I take the slice now, it's vertical. How does this describe the width of this slice? That's going to be at the delta X description. How wide this disk or washer is. Delta X wide. So that is the X case. Same here. The slice is it vertical or horizontal? Because from the previous two examples, as you can see, if the slice is horizontal, which means it's lying down flat, the width will be dy, and then it's dy case. If the slice is standing, then the width will be uh, dx. So that's going to be dx case. In our case, the width of the slice, which exists, it's not just square. It's a square with the width. It's like over here, tiny, tiny one, right? What kind of width is that? Dx or dy? Let's check. It's literally mapping, projecting, or shadowing. You call it the way you like it. Uh, as dy. Official term is mapping or projection. We kind of teach you projection at some point. The thickness can be described with y units. So it's dy. So the case is... Second case. Case 2 dy and also you could see we're kind of rotating about y-axis to be honest and it's not uh, hollow and we're not going to do shells where this side we're going to slice things so it's kind of discs but since the shape is not discs we cannot call it but it's going to be the closest to what i can say it's basically in terms of y so we're going to uh, we're going to now write down the formula we figure out the slice and we figure out the case. Step three, now we know the formula. Volume is integral from C to D. Area of the slice, dy. That's what we had pi r squared, remember? Used to be pi r squared because it used to be disk. Now it's not a disk anymore. It is a square side 2x, right? So let's try to build that. Uh, a, we already found A. That is going to be 4x squared. 4x squared. Now dy is dy. And y is how tall this object is. From 0 to this height. But they told us the height. The height is, they said the height is 20. Right? So oh, don't go away. This level is 20 because h is 20 so it's going to be from 0 to 20 that is my height h it told us how high it is do you see anything wrong with this formula i do see everything should be in terms of y y equals 0 y equals 20 so it should not be 4x squared thus we need to figure out what to do with a of y we have right now a let me put it in green step four a is equal 4x squared. That means it's a function of x. But we need the function of y. So we need to find the relationship between x and y and solve for x. Let's do that. To create a relationship between uh, x and y, so let's do relationship between x and y let's create equation of the line for example there's uh, several ways of doing it equation of the line Qu creating equation of the line is the most specific one it's going to be a linear relationship between two points between points choose any points on that on the object uh, 
that we know the information about. So let's see. I do know. Look at the slice, basically. I will probably do this. Look at the 3D object. I will put it in a different color for you, maybe in green. When does the object touches X and Y? So I will do this way. The axis touches here, and I actually can find out this point as well. So I will build this line, equation of the line. Let's call it L, small L, line L. Let's see what we know. Since the whole side is 23, then it's 23 everywhere, as you can see, right? We are looking at the middle of it, because that's how we created a 3D object. The 3D object has the cross, as you can see, right in the middle. So this coordinate will be 23 over 2, and the height is 0, because it's on the floor, right? It's on the x-axis, so y is 0. We have the first point. Let's see the second point. So this is my L. The second point, same logic. Each side is nine, as you can see, right? So I don't like how messy this one is. Each side is nine. So half of the side will be nine over two. And then the height is not zero anymore. It's actually lifted up by how much? Exactly by 20. So this point is nine over two comma 20. 9 over 2, this L is like on the way, 9 over 2, let me make a bit better graph, over and 20, L. So let's write down what I just figured out. Between two points, we have two points, 23 over 2, 0, and, this is an uh, end, 9 over 2, 20. This is given from the information about the 3D object. Well, we know how to build the equation of, ten, of the line through two points. Check out, I actually do have videos on that because I was teaching pre-calculus class and college algebra class. So, step one, find slope M. M is change in Y over change in X. Change in Y. You always do the second point minus the first point. 20 minus 0. And then 9 over 2 minus 23 over 2. Quickly simplify. It's going to be 9 over 9 minus 23 is 14. 14 over 2. Flip the fraction and you will get minus 20 over 7 if you simplify. Right? Anyway, let's do it together. 2 times 9 over 14. Oh yeah, makes sense. It's going to be 9, uh, oh, and times 20. I lost this 20. I was like, something is missing. And times 20. 20 times 20. 2 and 14 cancels out to 7. 1 7 to be exact. So it's going to be minus 9 is, oh, 9 is wrong. I don't know what is wrong. Why my calculations are so bad? There's no 9. Delete it completely. I'll just erase it. So pretending I did not do that. Mistake. Hey, that's my style. So I will have 20 over 7. 20 over 7. Is anything wrong here? Do you find a mistake? I wanted to make sure actually that I make this mistake to show you. This one is minus 14 over 2. So the whole answer is negative. Is it wrong to have a negative answer? No, that is because actually we're expecting the slope to be negative. Negative slope means the line is decreasing, right? So negative slope means L is decreasing. And it is, you see? If you want to slide down, uh, you will decrease from your height. So that makes sense. We're expecting slope to be decrease. Uh, we expect to be slope to be negative since L is decreasing. That's actually a nice way to check if you did a mistake. B, the formula. You can do different formulas. My favorite one is this one. Y minus Y naught equals M X minus X naught. So points and a slope. We found slope and we have points. Choose some point from those two which you like. I like 23 over 2 and 0 because then we have 0 which is nice. So it will be Y 
minus 0 equals minus 20 over 7 x minus 23 over 2. Here's the relationship. It's a linear the relationship between x and y. Minus 20 over 7x plus 230 over 7 if you distribute. So pause and distribute here by yourself. This is the equation of a line through two points. We called it L. Let me make it pretty. The line is called L. So, seriously. What was the goal? Why did we build this? Why we had to struggle so much? What was the idea behind it? We wanted to solve for x. And we solve for x. We're going to plug the relationship into the area. So we want to find a x squared in terms of y. And then plug it into the integral. So what is x, you know, in terms of y? So for x, so this was a and b, but we're going to step 5. Solve for x. That's not too bad, just some algebra really quickly. We're going to do y minus 230 over 7 equals minus 20 over 7x. To isolate x, I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 7 over 20 x will be isolated left hand side will be multiplied y minus 230 over 7 times minus 7 over 20. distribute and you have x equals minus 7 over 20. y minus minus gives you plus 7 cancels out with 7 23 over 2 23 over 2 because 230 simplifies with 20. Yes, looks good to me. Yeah, very good. I just checked my notes. This is the relationship. I will put it in a beautiful uh, box because this is the relationship we need to use inside of the area. So we're gonna put it in the area. So again, let's go back and then review what we what we want. Area of the slice, that's what we need. And we need it in terms of y is. It was um, 2x squared. And now we're plugging it. So it's going to be 2 squared x squared. And now we're plugging the relationship. Minus 7 over 20y plus, plus 23 over 2 squared take that take that and plug it into the integral wow that was like long time ago i, I don't even have space for it here it is plug it into the integral let me remember integral from 0 to 20 for x squared dy so let me just do this i like this or therefore or finally thus volume is the height of the 3D object is from 0 to 20. Inside it was a of y dy. So integral from 0 to 20. 4, because it's 2 squared. And then x squared minus 7 over 20y plus 23 over 2 squared dy. Hooray, we build a formula. Now we just need to integrate this. <laughs> But at least this was the hardest part. Now we just lots of calculations in algebra, which is not too bad. You use the formula. Let me quickly help you with that. I will kick out 4 outside. 4 integral from 0 to 20. And then you have minus 7 over 20 squared. It's squared with some formula. Lost y. y squared. Then it's going to be plus double product of everything. like so i don't have to do this parenthesis double product of everything i see maybe like so yeah plus the square the square of 23 over 2 23 over 2 squared see very nice and i actually don't need this parenthesis either dy simplify integrate and you will get 
Oh, you could actually use U substitution. I just realized it just right now. You could use U substitution. So either you do this way or very interesting. Okay, okay, check it out, check it out, check it out. I like U substitution more because I have a shortcut for U substitution. Integral for of AX plus B to the N DX is going to be AX plus B n plus 1 over n plus 1 treat it as the power rule like the way you know but then divide by the leading coefficient plus c divide by the leading coefficient that's a shortcut for you substitution which i love so much check out my video like and subscribe <laughs> so from this point of view volume is 4 and then i have minus 7 over 20 y plus 23 over 2 cubed cube over 3 times what is the leading coefficient whatever is attached to y so it's going to be 1 over minus 7 over 20 you can always flip it and instead of plus c it's going to be a bar from 0 to 20 nice very good i'm very satisfied with that and then let me help you to simplify the fraction just in case it's everything is going to be negative because of this negative sign now i have i have four four standing in the numerator three is in the denominator seven over 20 will be flipped so now it's going to be 20 over seven like so very cool and then i have these parentheses minus seven over 20 y plus 23 over 2 when you cubed when you plug 20 that will be the answer because when you plug 0 it's oh i'm wrong when you plug 0 there's also a number so a bar from 0 to 20 i used a u sub shortcut u sub shortcut maybe pause and find your own answer to compare with mine my answer is one six three four zero over three units cubed and this is the end of this problem it was tricky not only to illustrate it but also to figure out the size and what information can be used then the slice was a square unlike before we had discs then uh, when we knew the area of the slice, it was not good enough because we needed the dy case. Then to build the dy case, we had to build the equation of the line between two points. Then we solved for x. Then we plugged x into the area, which is x, 2x squared. And then we're integrating this. So, good job for watching. I mean, it was very creative, nice problem. A little bit too time consuming, but hey, we did it. Good job. Thank you for watching. See you next time.